Dr. Shri Kumar, uh, we welcome you here for your talk on vitamin C. Dr. Shri Kumar is, of course, you know, the MBBS, DLO, Phenom, and a lot of other degrees. Uh, but then he's the founder, mem founder of Wellness Solution and Saukhya uh, the in Institute. Uh, he's the president of Indian Nutritional Medical Association, BioWell Functioning Hospital and Nutrigenomics. Dr. Shri Kumar gets invited by IIMs, IITs, and all the other to talk about nutrition and epigenomics. So I think that is his, uh, you know, master blaster lecture uh, on epigenetics and how you can be uh, better with lifestyle changes. Over to you, Dr. Shri. And the topic is importance of vitamin C in oncology. Thank you. So by the time the slide starts, good afternoon. So my topic today is especially the role of vitamin C. I know that vitamin C is everybody is familiar with. But I know that uh, how to use it properly and what are these main, uh, main areas of involvement. Another thing which uh, I think most of the cancer specialist oncologists are scared especially to use vitamin C. And in fact, I have been going to various cancer hospitals uh, to give vitamin C or to give the, uh, give, educate the oncologist why you are not giving vitamin C. Even though vitamin C is one of the molecule which has been in practice for so many years, I think enormous number of literature you can see, research, but even then it failed in nutritional medicine. Why? Well, that is where I came because that is why today, because when I'm standing here, I know that vitamin C alone cannot do anything. Vitamin C will be one of the most important factor which can turn the table, but you need all the things, especially vitamin C and ozone. I club it together and that has given the fantastic results. And especially I will be scanning through some of my one of two of my case studies and so that you can see that what is vitamin C doing and how we can incorporate it. As you all know, cancer, cancer, cancer everywhere and we are the capital of the world. And I think the place where I am coming from, Kerala, that is the capital of uh, cancer in India. So you can see that the highest number of uh, cancer patients are living there. And myself was an oncosurgeon, so head and neck. So I know that, okay, now I am I'm not doing any oncosurgery now, but because of my reputation as an oncosurgeon, a lot of cancer cases come to me, and but I treat it with a very holistic manner. So this number is going to increase. That is what all of us know. The big question that a lot of people ask is, who is right? We know that cancer is caused by a lot and lot of factors. Biochemistry people will say it is a biochemical problem. Nutrition people will say it is some nutritional deficiency. And a genetic specialist will say it is a genetical problem. And environmental people will say it is a toxic problem. And finally, when you come into it, we know that all these are the factors. So that is why there is no magic bullet to get away from cancer. You have to have the multiple solutions. And the most important question is they ask, why me? That is the question which I have to answer a lot of times, especially people come and ask me, why I got a cancer? I have lived the best uh, systematic life and even then I got cancer. So you have to, when you really analyze the root problem, you can see why the cancer come. And if a doctor is practicing oncology, if you can answer these two questions, then you are done. You can manage the cancer better. So I say a few of my experience, especially this is a 31 year old male patient, he's from Chennai, with an osteosarcoma of the left hip, which has grown so big that he is fully bedridden, and he could not, uh, all the treatment that he has done in ADR Cancer Institute and CMC Vellur, and they found him hopeless, that there cannot be further treatment. So that time they came in. I was also reluctant to take the case, but something has to be done. So started with that, and you can see he came with the, now he's, uh, he has come uh, already now 19 years now. 
So started with the treatment, within six months he could walk around, and within nine months he was completely uh, no tumor, nothing there, and after one year only I did a CT scan study and found that there is no tumor, and he is still living happily without any evidence of any cancer. There's another lady with a stage four breast cancer with a fungating ulcerative growth. She came to me because all the hospitals rejected her because they said, okay, they cannot do surgery without doing preoperative chemotherapy. So she doesn't want chemotherapy. So she came to me, I said, okay, I will prepare you, but then you have to do, you have to go and do the surgery. So it took almost two months for to heal. I made, I made the patient uh, heal the ulcer and the fungating growth, and then sent to the hospitals, no hospitals take. They said, without chemo, we don't take. I called them in several, several hospitals. Uh, it's not in, uh, not in Kerala, it was in Hyderabad. So I called several hospitals, and they were reluctant to take it. So then I asked them to come down to Kerala, Cochin. So I, I, I called up one of my good friend surgeon. I said, they do the simple mastectomy with the lymph node resection, like picking up the lymph nodes. And she healed in five days. Only five days hospitalization, not even a single drop of blood was given. And even now, now she is almost nine years post this thing, no chemo, no radiation. Once in a while, she calls me and takes some nutrients, that's all. So she is completely cancer free. See, another 59 year old cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma of two years duration. Case was inoperable, I tried once, and then came further with ascites and brain involvement. So again, this is now, this case also is completely re reversed and he, uh, this pa patient is living now after five years. Another 39 year old adenocarcinoma colon, she is from US, post femicolectomy, partial lobectomy, and she, she had come because finally the Mayo's hospital had rejected her saying that no further treatment. So she had, uh, she came, she came down, and now she is 18 years past, no recurrence, leading a very high business in uh, California. So still alive all these people. So by 2023, I can say that I have treated more than 10,000 cancer cases, which are still living with high quality of life. <laughs> so with this, especially the main role was vitamin C and ozone. These two things were common. So I, I have not, uh, I used to give ozone for each and every cancer patient on the same day, same time, so it was getting a fantastic results. The discovery and isolation of vitamin C was one of the most important advances in improving human nutrition. So you can see it started from the 1747, and you can see from there started the journey of vitamin C. Lot of controversies and lot of uh, this thing. And Linus Pauling has come and strongly advocated the mega dose quantities of vitamin C. But he also was mainly concentrating on mental health and cancer. What happened is mainstream medicine was failed to follow it up with the proper research. And he was concentrating only on vitamin C. That was the reason why he, that studies were failed. So high dose vitamin C is mainstay of the, my treatment is high dose of vitamin C. I used to give sodium ascorbate or ascorbic acid. 30 grams intra intravenous per day. Then other functional wellness treatment protocols also along with that. Cure was not the aim. Somebody asked me, can you cure cancer? I say, I don't know what his cancer is. So then what, what do you have to cure? What is, why do you come to me? What is your problem? So you just treat the problems and you can cure. So only thing that I am concentrating is the quality added life in years. That is the WHO standard. So quality, quality has to be, that is the goal. So how better you want to live? Because one, one of the cancer patients whom I came, he was uh, in a comatose patient. He came from Bangalore, Arana Hridayala to me. And uh, he was completely calm. And I, uh, after five days, he came out. And what was happening is, what he was told, I asked him only one question, what do you want? He said he wants to go on a train from Cochin to Kannur. I said, fix up with the date, and he fixed in two months, and he could wo walk back to uh, Kannur on the 35th day. So that is, that is the only thing that you can do. I, I have not cured cancer. I have not done anything with cancer, but I only made his ambition stand. So you can see that vitamin C intake in humans, this is one of the most important examples, especially Preeti was talking about gut health. 
because it is limited by the intestinal barrier, oral administration, no matter the dose in plasma will reach only in a very, very micromolar range. So that is why oral vitamin C cannot come in the, as the treatment factor. So to achieve the pharmacological or therapeutic plasma, uh, plasma concentration, it should be in the millimolar range, not the micromolar. So the millimolar range has to come, it has to be in a higher dose. So now if you look at any time of the body, the body, of, uh, body contains around 300 milligram, to two grams of vitamin C every time. But this will be overused and it will create a big problem. High levels of vitamin C, millimolar concentrations are maintained in the cells and tissues that are highest. You can see the WBCs, eyes, adrenal glands, pituitary gland, and the brain. These organs contain the highest amount of uh, vitamin C. So it is low levels are usually seen in the plasmas, red blood cells, and saliva. So research, you can see that physiological doses does not include cell death. So that is the problem because it is not producing cell death. So that is why it cannot be used in uh, this dosage cannot be used in cancer. Pharmacological doses actually produce extracellular accumulation of ascorbic acid it is able to induce hydrogen peroxide production being one possible mecha mechanism of cell death. So ascorbic acid, why the term as sodium ascorbate came? Ascorbic acid is actively transported by sodium vitamin C co-transporter, SVCT. And this active transport is driven by the sodium electrochemical gradient created by sodium potassium ATPase. And this is the mechanism here. Ascorbic acid then diffuses into the capillaries and ultimately enter the general circulation. Vitamin C generally circulate as ascorbic acid. So only thing is that your role is to keep ascorbic, get the ascorbic acid there. So this is the two types of physiological dose you give, small dose you give, and the high dose you give. And you can see the, on the other side, it is a pharmacological dose. You can see the hydrogen peroxide is formed at the extracellular level, and also it is producing the cell death. So it can produce apoptosis, and that is the mechanism of action of uh, especially the high dose of vitamin C. Smaller dose, especially one gram, two grams, it can have only this normal range, but it cannot kill the cancer cell. And these are the various organs which is being st uh, storing vitamin C for a uh, better because pituitary, adrenals, islands, liver, brain, pancreas, and spleen, kidney. Islands because you just see the lens of the eye. If you want to get away from cataract, take good dose of uh, vitamin C every day. So you can, uh, you can see that you will not get a cataract and do the cataract surgery. So this is uh, the mechanism of accumulation, especially special carrier, uh, especially through SVCT1 and 2, transport ascorbic acid directly into the cell against concentration gradient. And then vitamin C is used for recycling also. C is oxidized to dehydroascorbic acid, which you have seen in the uh, picture. Once inside the cell, DHA is reduced back to ascorbic acid, thus maintaining the DHA gradient. So the cell is able to accumulate high levels of ascorbic acid. So the lot of reviews in 91, this is a study which uh, Gladys Block, formerly the National Cancer Institute, concluded that very, very strong evidence of a protective effect of vitamin C in non-hormone cancers. So the question of what you see cancer today, what is it? Is it a modern scurvy? Because cancer patients are normally tired, listless, bruise easily, and have a pure appet poor appetite. Uh, they don't sleep well and have a low threshold for pain. Typical symptoms of scurvy. So you can see this in a cancer patient. So scurvy is being manifested as cancer today. <laughs> so the action is mainly antioxidant, oxidant high doses. You can see the dehydroascorbate, uh, oxidant only to cancer cells. In normal cells, it is reloaded back as an antioxidant. So it has got a double-edged sword. Cellular reaction, tumor cells are damaged and have higher levels of unstable metal ions such as copper or iron. The mixture of free iron and C generates hydrogen peroxide in the cells. So these are the mechanisms of action, production of hydrogen peroxide, glucose starvation of the cancer cells, control ion chemistry, control deoxy, ribose nuclease, control apoptosis, control intracellular pH. So especially when you look at here, I had a patient recently in Pune. I think uh, Dr. Renu knows. Uh, 
the patient was admitted. He's a big man. Admitted in a hospital. Cancer, meds everywhere. And then one doctor uh, asked me to give vitamin C. I phoned up and said, give this dose of 30 grams BD, morning and evening. So the second, next day, they called me up. Sir, high level of, uh, the, he's a diabetic patient also. So diabetes went up, 450 is the blood sugar and ketones. I said, who asked you to test it? Don't test it till me. How is the patient? Patient is happy, no problem. Then I said, don't look at the result. Call me after seven days with the result. I don't check blood sugar or ketones for seven days. The patient is discharged, and they, she, he was about to die. You know, uh, I think a few days, uh, five days back, the patient was discharged. So that is. So you have to understand this uh, this chemistry. Then only you can see that, because it produces starvation and it produces ketones, and uh, diabetic patients. Somebody will suspect, especially in uh, maybe in hospital, they will give immediately give insulin, and patient will die. So it can alter the calcium metabolism, reduce angiogenesis, inhibit migration and metastasis, immune effect. It has got a powerful chelation activity. So high dose of vitamin C is a very powerful chelator. You can chelate any heavy metals out. So it's a general antioxidant property also. So this is uh, what is uh, vitamin C doing with hydrogen peroxide. So you can see that uh, Pharmacological vitamin C concentration selectively kills cancer cells acting as pro-drug to deliver hydrogen peroxide to the tissues. So that is why it has got a very powerful action, especially at the cellular level. So these are all studies which is showing that uh, vitamin C and uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is produced and which can, which can actually produce a cell death. And it is also producing a vitamin C and glucose competition by oxidized vitamin C, DHAA, is which, which is much more lethal in cancer cells. Vitamin C has act as anti-clastrogens. What are clastrogens? They cause chromosomal damage, and these are produced by chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So what happens when you do? We think that, okay, they are actually destroying cancer cells, but actually they are damaging the chromosome. So high-dose vitamin C show anti-clastrogenic properties because... And this is, this is how the controversy came with chemotherapies or, or maybe the oncology. They say vitamin C is not good. So they say it is actually acting against chemotherapy. But actually what happens is the reverse. C typically increases the killing effect of drugs, reduce the toxicity of drugs. Why? Chromosomal damage in the cancer cell by radiotherapy cannot destroy the cell. What happens is the cell antigens, the cancer antigens will come out. T cells are not there to kill these uh, cells and they can again reinvade and produce problems. So cell death can be caused by gene expression that code protein, that is capaces, that initiate the programmed cell death. So chemotherapy and radiotherapy are non-targeted DNA damage. And genes also may be damaged so the cancer cells cannot be killed by this therapy becomes resistant. So that is why vitamin C is very important, especially if you, if you want to put the patient on chemo or radiotherapy. So this is the anti-clastrogen effect, protect cancer cell DNA, and by default, protect cell death genes. Cell death genes switched by, on by other means, intracellular hydrogen peroxide leads to death of cell. This is how vitamin C's real mechanism is happening. That is why reason for the integrative cancer management is there, should be there, otherwise it will not work. It also lowers the pH, so you can see that pH is lowering in the cellular level because then only it can enter the mitochondria and damage the mitochondria of the, of, of the uh, cancer cell. Vitamin C and iron, intracellular iron levels may be a critical factor in C-induced apoptosis. So you can see that it decreases the cellular iron uptake by melanoma cells in, uh, in a dose and time dependent fashion. So it is very powerful in neurovolus. I have, I think, more than 15 cases of... Uh, even uh, high-grade glioblastoma, which has been completely free of, uh, without any surgery, has been come out. So intracellular iron was reduced after exposure to vitamin C. So apoptotic markers were reduced when cells were pre-treated with iron donor, that ferric ammonium citrate. So you can see that it has got a very important connection with fenton reaction, especially with vitamin C and iron. So catalase is another enzyme that de degrade hydrogen peroxide in extracellular space. This is low in most cancer cells, present in high concentration normal cells. Hence, that is why there is no pro-oxidant action in the normal cells because of catalase enzyme. 
So I, addition of, you can see this by looking at the blood. Addition of small amount of uh, whole blood completely stop hydrogen peroxide when ascorbate is added. So it acts in various roles. These are all studies which has come out with, uh, it, with the various role in cancer. So the Warburg effect, especially that is the latest metabolic theory came. Cancer cells depend heavily on glycolysis and aerobic metabolism leading to heavy consumption of glucose. So if glucose entrance to the cell is blocked, cells can be starved leading to cell death. So that is what ha why how it happens, especially when you check the blood sugar because the this cannot be absorbed, so it is circulated in the blood serum. So if you take the blood and you can see the blood sugar is going up, if you give medicines, then it is going to fail because it is going to kill the patient. So high dose of vitamin C in extracellular fluid affect glucose uptake by cancer cells starving it. So that is why if you do the real test, you do, do a before vitamin C injection, you take the blood sugar. If it is 100, and after the injection, maybe after 45 minutes of bleaching of 30 grams, so you can see the blood sugar is going up at 350 or 400. So it doesn't mean that it is diabetic, it is because the vitamin C is working. That is what you have to see. No, by the drip is over, when the drip is over. So this is activi activating many various uh, molecules in the cellular level, genetic level, and glucose and vitamin C in cancer is going on debate. So most likely to uh, secure protection against cancer cells. Cancer cells rely on glucose, becoming acidic, and hence they are sensitive to oxidative stress. That is why when the starvation is there, as Dr. Pradeep was telling, starvation can kill cancer cells. So a lot of studies, especially on the, uh, during 1970s and otherwise oral administration after the post injections high dose. And again, uh, these are all IV administration can produce plasma concentration as high as 26,000 millimoles per liter. So this is why it is very, very toxic to cancer cells. And concentration of this magnitude can selectively toxic to tumor in cells in vitro also. So based on the lot of research evidences, you can see that the patient is advanced cancer who had remarkably long survival times following administration of high dose of IV vitamin C. So you can see going through the various research, especially which is acting at the genetic mechanisms and epigenetic area. And again, uh, these, are, these are studies, especially in 13 glioblastoma patients receiving radiotherapy and uh, small lung cancer. Receiving chemotherapy showed that IV ascorbate treatment extended survival patients. So these are all, these are all studies. Again, uh, acute myeloid leukemia is a very uh, much cause of death. This also has been studied and all these retrospective studies in hepatocellular carcinoma. So colorectal cancer and in most of the studies, so I just put up these slides to just to give that uh, about the research that is happening. So the proven studies, especially about the six decades studies focused on unraveling the relationship between vitamin C and cancer. So you can see that a lot of uh, evidences are piling up on the cancer So natural vitamin C intake and the risk of head and neck cancer, again, International Journal of Cancer, it has come. We can see that this actually intake of vitamin C is inversely related to oral and pharyngeal cancer. And recently, one of our minister, chief minister, who had a laryngeal cancer in uh, Bangalore Hospital, which is under my treatment now, he is, uh, he is discharged now from HCG Cancer Hospital. So our protocol, 30 grams daily, so you can say the five days you give, then two days rest. Then again, five days, three cycles, review and repeat after two weeks, severe cases, 60 gram in 90 minutes, additional 10 gram per hour in two hours. I have given up to 100 grams per day. Continue the same for five days a week or two to three weeks, maintenance 50 to 30 grams. Dosage can be varied as per the patient. These are the common protocol dosage that I am using. No, no, five days continuously, two days off. Then again, five days. Indian also, I am using. 
Yeah. We see a lot of uh, rise in creatinine. The patient, uh, uh, you know, is Plus, uh, you, you, are, uh, you have to add sodium, sodium bicarbonate. You have to add sodium bicarbonate. How much? One, one, uh, one vial I used to add. That is like 10 ml? Yeah. Okay. Because if you are if you are giving every day, you have to add soda bicarbonate. If you are huh, if you are giving every day, you have to add. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we keep it maximum two sodium, times a sodium week. Sodium ascorbate you can. I have but taken anyway, sodium ascorbate straight, you know, without any dilution also. Anyway, we combine with ozone, so it's okay. I can do it twice a week. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Inside the drip. Oh. IV, sir. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sir, IV? No, uh, take orally. <laughs> we have tried uh, iodine along with uh, uh, vitamin C. Convert the vitamin C to dihydroascorbate in situ. So you actually inject dihydro rather than putting... Uh, you make your no no you can make it logo also I think. you can make it no your pharmacist can make it <laughs> hello okay you uh, you have to supply to us okay then we need to be t we need to be sure about the ingredient because uh, so that for that we use uh, mct oil mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, as he is rightly said, iodine is one of the cheapest anti-malignant drug, you know. It can, iodine, any, any cancer, you give, because we, you, after surgery, uh, on the wound, we used to keep betadine for 10 minutes, then only we close. Iodine is supposed to kill cancer cells straight. So, iodine, I have given iodine very high dose in breast cancer without any, without any surgery. Oral, oral. So, Revolutionizing outcome of studies show definite hope is uh, in integration precision medicine for cancer treatment and I think vitamin C is very crucial and precaution by reducing agent when injected may interfere with the glucose test so you have to be careful don't give selenium injection along with along with vitamin C mixture should be given immediately as become unstable I never mix anything with vitamin C except soda bicarb or other things I I don't want to magnesium I don't give along with that maybe give us a separate drip. Sodium ascorbate is ideal in high dose as it acts diuretic and hence sodium is excreted via urine. So you cannot say that, okay, sodium is going up. So pharmacological concentration of plasma ascorbate from uh, 0.3 millimoles to 15 millimoles are achievable only by intravenous administration. So that is why all oral doses, it will, it will reach only 0.22 micromoles. That is the lowest limit that you can come. Side effects, these are the side effects. If you have, when you're giving, you, we have seen thirst, chilling effect, pain in the veins. This can be minimized by slowing the rate of infusion, keeping the patient warm, reclining, blanket and hot water bottle, water, water for the thirst. Be aware that always uh, be should make sure that IV cannula is correct. It can leak into the tissues and produce interaction. Acute phlebitis will result. Manage with the local heat and float dissolving cream. So we use ozone, especially if somebody is using it. So we can see ozone will actually manage it much better. So that was my last slide. And this is how my con our conference is going to happen. I'm mainly on sustainable health through precision medicine. But all we are talking to uh, today and all these talks are coming as precision medicine. And precision medicine has to follow with precision nutrition, precision pro protocols. And this is going to be replaced so we have to, it is on July 8th and 9th at IMA House, Cochin. So uh, on the 8th morning, we are having a workshop. So it is, uh, everybody can attend. It's a genome metabolic workshop, which is Dr. Virendra Nath Banerjee also is uh, being a moderator. So thank you very much. Any questions I think I can take after that. No questions right now. Sorry. I have a lot of uh, lectures. No, no, no. You ask him separately or if he's there after lunch, I have enough time. We can ask as many questions. I will call the whole panel. You ask questions. But whoever is present. But right now, no questions. Sorry, I'm just too overwhelmed with it. Uh, I request Dr. Karthikeyan to felicitate uh, our Dr. Shri Kumar and also Dr. Emilia, if you can join. Thank you. 
because dr shrikumar is so senior i need 